Hello, I'm Rolando Carrasco. I am from Mexico. <clears throat> Thank you to Francisco Muñoz for inviting me to this to this webinar. Uh, today's session is about serverless or, or function as a service. We are going to demo the Oracle FM project, which is a new project from Oracle. It's an open source project. I think it was delivered back in 2017. By the time Oracle Open World happened in San Francisco last year, um, I think Oracle announced it there. And, um, and now it is, it is a part of this new offering that Oracle has in the cloud. And in a specific for serverless, this is a very good offering. And I sh I'm actually going to, to do some live coding for you so you can see the, prow the power of the platform. As I told you, I am Rolando Carrasco. I am from Mexico. This is my, my Twitter handler, my blog, my LinkedIn, my email. So you can, you can contact me with, within or through these um, channels if you uh, want um, to contact me about a specific question about this session or about something different, about Oracle, about APIs, about services, microservices, containers, serverless, uh, cloud computing, cloud computing itself, then just, just drop me an email or a tweet or whatever, and, and I will be more than happy to help you. Um, this is the agenda for today. Uh, we are going to, to deliver a very brief introduction about uh, what is happening in the world about the way we build software. And uh, then we are going to be moving about, about the context of the application development, what is happening nowadays, and what are the concerns or the main concerns, con concerns about our, our organizations uh, developing and deploying software. And uh, then we are going to be talking about serverless computing uh, concepts. And then finally, we are going to get into the demo. I think this is going to take us about maybe 40 minutes, no more than that. So let's start with the introduction. Um, this is part of my profile. Uh, this is uh, part of my work. I wrote this book, the one at the left, the Oracle API Management 12C Implementation Book. Um, it was back in, in 27, no, 2015. Uh, this was a book that I wrote with another colleagues. It was a normal book in the way that we wrote it. It was a, a work from end to end. We started to, to write it, I think it was back in, in January 2017, maybe February. And by, I think, August, uh, we finalized it. And it was um, published, I think, on, on October. By October, it was already published. So, so it, it was a great year for me on, on 2015, sorry. But to be honest, this is a book of a product that Oracle is, it is not promoting anymore, which is the Oracle API Management 12C, plan, 12C platform, sorry. That has changed, and now we have the Oracle API platform cloud service, which is a new Oracle cloud service uh, offering, um, which I think it was uh, released on 2017. So by 2017, I also uh, participated as a participated as a technical reviewer for this book, the one that is in the, the blue one that is in the screen. So last year, I was working on on reviewing this book, and also by the end of 2016, I was reviewing this other book, which is implementing Oracle Integration Cloud Service. So um, it, these are two books that were written in a different way than the first one because these because these books are from from cloud offering it is it is another thing it is very different not only the technology has changed but also the way that we are doing this type of things in this case writing a book so this is actually part of the presentation i am trying to highlight that the technology has changed in a way that it is um, modifying the way we live uh, the way that software is being built and serverless is actually part of that. Uh, I am also part of the of two Oracle advocacy programs, the Oracle Ace program and the Oracle Developer Champion program. I've been an Oracle Ace for the last um, eight years now. It was 2012, but I I have engaged with with the program for many years now. I started to. Um, to send candidates for the Oracle Ace program, I think, uh, since 26, uh, uh, 2006, sorry. So, so it is almost 12 years now. So I've been related with the program for many years now. And for the Developer Champion program, it is a new program. Um, this is um, 
this is a program for invitation. I think Oracle is the one who is taking care about who 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 they want to invite, and then you just get invited and 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 you decide if you want to join or, or no the program. I was invited last last year in May, so I joined the the program a year ago, and I was the first person in Latin America to be part of this program. And now we are four: one from Brazil, Otavio, a person from Colombia, which is Alexis, uh, women for um, from Guatemala uh, by the name Mercedes and myself. We are the four developer champion in the region. And this is a program, I think it is no more than tw- than 40 persons now. So it, it is it is a small group. It is constantly growing. And it is about new technology, definitely. Uh, serverless, um, containers, microservices, chatbots, uh, blockchain, um, artificial intelligence, uh, machine learning, NoSQL databases, and open source uh, in general. This is part of the, way, the the things that we would like to promote, and uh, because of the, the the things that we do constantly in our in in, in our organizations, then then we are constantly in, in contact with this type of technologies. So that's it. Um, serverless is part, in my opinion, of um, an, an enabler of of the digital transformation. Um, digital transformation is changing the way we live. Uh, that is why, or that, that's the reason why of this slide. Um, I, I was traveling to Bangalore this year. I think it was it was around April um, this year again, um, and I think it was like thirty six hours from from Mexico City to Bangalore, and the whole trip I was able to do it without having the need to to be in contact with someone or or talk with someone and just took an uber from my house to the mexico uh, international a- airport here in mexico city then i made a check-in from uh from my mobile device in narrow mexico and then i just get to paris because i i had to to make a stop in paris before getting to bangalore and and i also took an uber from the uh, from the Paris airport to the hotel. I also did the check-in to the hotel via my mobile device. Then at the other day, I had to to go to the Paris airport and as well, I just took an Uber. So I actually don't speak French, so I I was not able to talk with, with, with anyone. So, so and, and then getting to Bangalore, then finally I had the need to talk with someone because that was my first time. I didn't know how to how to, how to move in the city. It was actually late night. It was around midnight. So it was not so easy to, to find a, a cab. So I had to do so many things in order to get to the hotel. So, so I had to talk with someone, but the, the, before that, I just basically do it through it through my device. So digital transformation is changing the way we live and changing the way we, we, um, we relate each other. I am not highlighting the way that, that we are relating and, and that we are not talking or we, we don't have the need to talk with, with other person. No, that's not the way or that's not the thing that I would like to highlight. What I am trying to highlight is how technology is pushing us in, in doing things that probably, probably 10 years ago it was not possible to do it. It was impossible to think that through a very small device I, was a, I could be able to do all these type of things. But in the other hand, uh, all these platforms, all these applications, such as Uber, such as the the, uh, the airlines, the hotels, Netflix, Amazon, and so on, they they change the way their platforms are being built, and that actually change the way that uh, or, or the whole model about developing software. So this is exactly the the reason why we are having this this presentation and, and part of that is is the concept of serverless. If we get back maybe I think 15 years now, maybe even maybe 20, but no more than that, probably we, we will be we will be talking about this type of concepts or this type of technologies. Uh, an application server, Java Enterprise Edition, .NET, uh, WebLogic, uh, web services, maybe SOA. Uh, service bus, but maybe SOA service bus is maybe 10 years now, nine years now. And now probably uh, two years, three years, maybe no more than four, microservices, functions, which is 
kind of new lambda function for example amazon is very uh, into that uh, containers apis cloud development but if we take a look to the list from maybe point point one to five it is it is something is very constant in those type of deployments because we are actually building monoliths and we are always trying to maintain our monolithic applications so if, if something goes wrong inside an application probably it can affect the whole application server and, and that is that is pro probably something not, not 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 that good. Not that good. We would like to be more flexible or more more agile in the way that we we deploy our applications. But that's the way that we've been doing for the last maybe twenty years now. And that's not bad. That's just the way the technology. But well, that was uh, our technology back on that years or those years. And obviously that has been happening for the for the for the last decade decade at least and and that's the way we build the applications and those type of applications are the ones that are that we are maintaining now and pro probably those those type of applications are the ones that we are trying to move in, moving away from so that is part of the context context about this session and in my opinion what has happened well a lot of things has happened from during the last 20 years obviously but something which is very in, in um, what it is part of any type of technology conversation or presentation or session or, or idea is that the world has changed. Uh, that is, that is true. The technology has changed as well. Uh, third generation technology has taken control about the way we build software. Uh, open source and companies like Amazon, Google, Netflix, and so on are changing the way that we perceive application development because of the needs they have or they have or they currently have and they will have in the, in the upcoming years. Uh, they change the way we build software. And digital transformation has pushed companies to innovate and move faster than ever. And I would like to highlight the, the bullet uh, number three because those uh, companies actually change uh, the way that we are now realizing uh, agile development or, or top or, or new wave development in, in our organizations. Uh, but th there is something uh, that we need to understand and, and it is the following, the presence, the continuous service, the top line revenue, innovation, are changing the way that companies are being perceived in, in the market. Because if we uh, imagine uh, Netflix being offline for more than 30 minutes, it will be crazy. I think it, it has happened very few times that Netflix has gone offline. And I mean, it is true that has happened, but it is not so constant. In the other hand, they are trying and they are always looking to have availability, as much as availability as they can. In the other hand, we, as normal people, if you will, that we work for normal organizations, banks, retail, or whatever, uh, we constantly have uh, windows um, for deploying a new functionality and then we just do it at night, maybe when we don't have operation, or maybe we do have operation, but because of it is at night, at night, then we can be um, offline for a few minutes or maybe hours. And we constantly do that and, and we deploy our changes at night. And uh, the other day we, we create a war room in order to be aligned or, or be prepared for any any issue that the operation may have and if something goes wrong then we start the roll the rollback for for that change and if the rollback did not work then probably we can be offline for hours and then we we just do that and we just do it on a constant on a, or on or in a normal basis and that is not okay because how netflix who has millions of users how they can be available in the way they are and we that probably we run a normal organization that may have more than maybe three four decades in the market and netflix has just years in the market 
how they can be so successful on having their applications available and how we, that we do not run a, a so complex infrastructure, how we can be, um, or how can we be offline maybe an hour or maybe 30 minutes. So, so that, that, that is interesting how, how things are being changing and how those type of companies have changed the way we build software and how they are able to be so available all the time. Uh, innovation, on the other hand, is no longer a desire or a separate agenda. It is, it is a reality. I mean, it, it is actually a need. We cannot be a new organization or, or trying to be on the digital transformation era without innovating. So that is, it is just out of the question. We just need to, to innovate. Uh, on the other hand, business agility, uh, it is also very constant in, 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 in any IT organization. We always try to have business agility for our, for our organization, for our applications, but we cannot do that. For some reason, our current, um, our current operation is not allowing us to, to be uh, agile or as much, uh, uh, or with the more agility as, as we would like to have. We have banks or we have normal uh, retail companies who may have a very complicated infrastructure and they, they cannot innovate because they are just uh, taking care about the current operation and, and maintaining um, databases and application servers. And we even have a customer here in Mexico who is running 500 uh, web logic domains. So you can imagine how, is, how difficult it is to, to manage uh, 500 domains. So it is basically a constant task that they, that they are doing throughout the day. So they, they don't have time to innovate. So, so th this is basically the way that we are living we are currently living and deploying applications and it is definitely not allowing us to to innovate so let's just take one step back in order to analyze how our applications are being built and which are the concerns that we have around it so most of the time we are looking for or keeping our, our applications as much as available uh, available as as we can and because of that we we just try not to make too many changes in, into them. Uh, we try to maybe make a change once in a while, maybe once every every week, once every month, but no more than that. So we don't have too much time to innovate. Uh, every time that we would like to grow or, or scale our infrastructure, it's difficult to 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 give an answer about it. We just maybe just double the CPUs or maybe double the machines or whatever and to be honest, probably it, we are over overreacting into that and over um, estimating the amount of, of infrastructure that we need. So that is not good. We are overpaying probably a license or um, machines or people maintaining all these difficult infrastructure. So it, it is not it is not easy, and it is actually uh, the concerns that we have <clears throat> constantly which is sizing or compute resources or licensing, uh, maintenance, operations, infrastructure, projects, or, or are we really paying <clears throat> the infrastructure that we really need or we are overpaying that? We have more licenses than, than the, the ones that we really use. Are we having um, a problem when every time we need to to make a sizing on, on our application. So these are very common concerns. So probably you are, you are asking yourself, well, what, what is that? And what is the relationship with serverless? Well, it happens that serverless, it is a new compute model where our focus is on the development of the small pieces of software that we may be calling as functions and not in the complexity of the underneath infrastructure. So we are actually going to focus on building software and not focusing on, on the complexity of, of the entire infrastructure we may go into operative system, networking, the storage, databases, application servers, and so on. So the provisioning, the scaling will not be part of our concerns. And that may be sound awkward, but that is, that, that, that is the, real, um, the real deal with serverless. Uh, we don't care about it. We just care about our software and the way we build it and the way we deploy it when that's it. 
we are not going to be taking care about the rest of, of the complexity of, of our infrastructure. And, and for that regard, we are going to be building a small pieces of software, and those small pieces of software are actually functions. And that is why the definition about function as a service. So functions, may, we, we may um, describe them or define them as code with a very defined purpose. It has an input, it will process that input, and ultimately it will respond, it, it will respond back to the caller, and that's it. It's just a function as, as we are used to, to, to have in our um, function-oriented programming language, just that, just that function. It, it, they, they may be autonomous, they, or, or we want them to be autonomous, so that we will be creating a functions for a specific functionality, functions for a specific scenarios. So uh, the, the way that we are going to deploy probably will be through containers, so the container is, is going to isolate the infrastructure where the, the that specific function is going to be running. And sometimes probably we we are going to build those functions for for a specific scenarios and may, they may be ephemeral. So for example, if we are going to deploy a new functionality because we are on, on, on a Christmas season, and then uh, just for Christmas, we are going to be offering a specific product and this is going to be published on our website, on our online shop. Probably we are going to be receiving more requests or more transactions because of the season. And those functions can be just deployed for that specific, that specific season. When the season just ends, then we just finalize it and, and we just destroy it. But again, what would be the benefits for that? I mean... We just get the idea about how complicated are our applications nowadays. Uh, we just got the idea about how difficult it is to scale them and to maintain them. But what about serverless? What would be the benefits for that? So let's take a look into a, a very common model, a very common example. If you just get back to the year 2000 uh, or so, uh, you maybe remember, or you may remember, um, the Java Pet Store, which was a, a sample application for uh, highlighting the way a Java Enterprise Edition is being deployed or is being built. And some, it was very common to deploy the Java Pet Store into a application server, into any application server, WebLogic, WebSphere, or, or any other application server that was available in the market. But that application was just deployed on top of an application server if something went wrong on inside that application, whatever, that may crash the whole application server and the whole application will stop working. If we wanted to scale the application, we needed to scale the whole package. So it was the, the, the big piece of software was being scaled uh, horizontally or vertically or whatever, but it was the, the, the small piece of software being scaled. Uh, we will we were probably using a SQL database, probably replicated or in, in terms of Oracle and Oracle Rack uh, for that regard. And the browser, which was the consumer of the application, was just doing the calls, not doing anything extra, but just the calls to the application. So that is a very simple model, but it, was a, it, it is a very common model for us in the way that we build applications. And, and this, this is not, this is not uh, wrong. This is, this is okay, actually. This is the way that we've been doing for the last years. And this is the way that we can um, uh, understand our own infrastructure, our own applications. And that's good. That's fine. But let's just contrast it with functions. If we think the application as a, <clears throat> as a set of functions, probably we will be deploying... <clears throat> As I already mentioned, a specific function for purchase, <coughs> a specific function for search, searching the catalog, and maybe functions that we don't even uh, wrote them, but someone else just wrote them, and they offer them as a service. For example, the authentication, the authentication service. Probably we are going to be using Amazon Cognito or Oracle Identity Cloud Services. Uh, the browser in this scenario has a, a very um, a strong 
activity because actually the, the browser is going to be executing part of the application, which, which is very different to the first model. Uh, we, maybe we have different databases, SQL databases, non-SQL databases, and a specific database for purchasing or for the, for the function or for the purchase functions or the purchase form functionality, the product database. So we are actually dividing the application and what we are dividing it, we are writing a specific function for a specific, a specific functionalities. We are reusing someone else's function, for example, the, auth the authentication service, and we are actually um, putting into the browser or, or, or having the browser um, executing tasks for our application. So the, the model is very different. And now let, let's think on a very common scenario. Let's think that we are offering a new pet because this is a pet store. So we are announcing a new pet for next week. So we are actually waiting or expecting a new uh, load or, or new transactions because people is going to be eager to get into our website and look or search for the pet and actually or ultimately buying it. So imagine this scenario and, and you are actually the owner of this application and, and your manager get into you and say, hey, just tell me how we are going to scale this because we are expecting a very high load in the upcoming week. So what would be your answer for that? I mean, how would you be, how would you be sure that you can, you can size this on a correct or, or on a proper manner and, and the application itself is going to be fulfilling the, the, new, up, uh, the, the new transactions? Uh, to be honest, this is going to be difficult because you, you, you have not had the time to test it or you actually don't know how many persons are going to be querying the application or using the application. You, you just don't have that information because you are waiting that for, for you just, you are waiting that to happen, but you don't have control for that. So maybe um, the pet is not so good and people is not going to be entering to the website, but maybe it is very good and you are actually having the sales of your life and you are having tons and tons of transactions. So how you are going to be handling that? If we take a look into the function model, into the serverless model, as I already mentioned in the beginning, we are not going to be taking care about the complexity of, of whatever is behind the infrastructure and how to scale it and how to maintain it and how to increase um, uh, CPU power and so on. This is going to be um, growing just as in, in the same pace as, the, as we have transactions. If we have a high amount of transactions for purchasing, if we have, we have a high amount of transactions for, for the catalog, then those functions are the ones that are going to be growing. And we, we're just going to be using the application and we are going to be very calm because the platform is going to be scaled by itself. We just want to be, we just need to be taking care or very, or be ready for, for writing our functions. So if, if we wrote a good code, which ultimately is, is whatever, or, 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 or is exactly what we, we want to be uh, focused on, then the application is going to be uh, ready to go because the rest, the, all the um, complexity about the scaling, this is going to be part of the, of the platform itself. So we can say that fast is related with executing code of backend type without the need to manage our own servers for our application. So, so that is exactly the way that we would like to, to define this. So we are about to go to the Oracle FM project. Oracle FM project is an open source uh, project from Oracle. It's a polyglot um, platform. You, you can write functions in, in Python, in PHP, in Go, in Java, in JavaScript, in Ruby. So as you can see, those are the most common programming languages, languages nowadays. So you can write functions in any of those programming languages. You can go to the fmproject.io website to download it. It is uh, just a binary. In my case, it is a .exe file. We just, you just download it and you just execute it. You just need Docker for that regard. Uh, you, can you can have the, the source code from GitHub and you can get to samples and many other contributions from the community. And it is a very good project. So I, 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 I encourage you to, to use it. So 
let, let's let's use it. Um, let's just clear this. Um, I have the the FNXA right here. I have I am just going to start it. So something just went wrong right here. Let me just take a look here. Let me just stop it so you can see the whole process from the beginning. So there is nothing running here. We are going to start the FN. So it has started and it is listening in port 8080. And I am going to show you, um, let me delete this thing. Oh, let, let, let's do this. Let's, uh, let's copy these samples. Okay. Upon a Rolando APAC. I am going to write three to four functions for you. One in Go, one in Node, one in Java, one in Python. Those functions are just going to receive my name and they, they are going to be a uh, hello world type of program. They're just going to getting back to saying hi to me. So let's let, let me just delete this file in order to demo you the, the entire thing. So let me open a new uh, window. So let me move to my folder where I have the samples for you. Let's start with Go. Okay, let's start with Go. Um, as I told you, I just need the FN in my path. So this is all what I can do with, with FN. I need to make a Docker login because I am going to be using lo uh, Docker. I need to set um, an FN registry, which is here. And then I am ready to go. I have go here, a go function, which is very simple. This is my code, just saludos con go, which is in Spanish. Let me create a function, and I am actually going to create a REST service on top of this. So let's do it. Yes, fn start, fn init, sorry. This has uh, realized that this is a, a go function, so it is assuming that go is the runtime. Now this, this has created the, the manifest, and this is inside the manifest. Now I am going to run it. So once I run it, this is going to create the Docker image. This is going to encapsulate my code and this is going to run it. And this is the, the output of my function. Now I am going to deploy it and I am going to, to put a name on this like APAC Go or APAC Go. This is going to deploy the Docker um, image to the Docker Hub. And this is going to register the function inside my, my function server. And I can actually use it. Let's go to Postman to test it. This is going to be under slash go. So let's go to Postman. Let me close some of the projects that I have already here. Uh, okay, so let's do this. Let's call it to localhost. So I think I the APAC, APAC go and go. I think that was the name that I used. So yes, APAC go slash go. Let's send it. So this is getting back to me with saludos con go. That's the FM project. Okay. So that was with go. As I show you, the code is very simple. It's just a very simple Go code. No annotations, no nothing. This is just being um, deployed with the FN and FN is doing the rest for me. Now let's go with Python. Uh, let me delete this funk jamo. Uh, it's, it's like this, okay. So, let me show you the Python code. So it is a very common Python code right here. Okay. So it is the same thing. It's just fn init. Sorry, fn init. Now it has created the JAMO. If I take a look to the JAMO, to the JAMO file, we have this. 
and then I am going to run it. This is going to create a Docker image, put my code inside the image and run the function. And this is saying, hola, yo también hablo Python. And then I am going to deploy it. And I am going to put the name APAC Python. This is going to deploy the um, Docker image to the Docker Hub. And this is going to register the, the function to my function server. And now I can test it. Okay. And I think I put it uh, uh, like this. Okay. Uh, something go wrong. So let me take a look to the name. Uh, I, I just I just misspelled it. It is not APAC. It is APAN. Sorry for that. So it's APAN. Sorry. So now let's do a post. Okay. This is content type. Let's use application JSON. Let's go to body, raw. Let's write this name and Rolando. Okay. Mm, okay. Now look. Okay, Peter. Okay, so that was with Python. Now let's do it with Node. Okay, so let's do this. Okay, now let, let's do an FN in it. Let me show you the code so you can see it. It's very simple JavaScript code. Okay, I just did the init. Now let's do the run. Is going to create the, deploy, the the Docker image. Okay. All right. So that has created the Docker image and run the function. And now I am going to deploy it. And I'm going to use 8-pack nodes as the name. Okay. And this is deploying to the Docker Hub. Um, I have done this in the past, so so this is that's the reason why because Docker is um, well known about putting a layer on top of it every time you did something on top of a, a Docker image. So that is why you see here this this layer thing. And now I have deployed it and it is under Node, and I can test it with a pack a pack Node slash Node. And now it is going to say hi with nodes, okay? So as you can see, we basically uh, have created three different functions with, the three, with three different uh, programming languages. If we get back here and go to the, to the Docker Hub, um, here are the, the Go, uh, image the Python image okay so you can pull the the image from here if you will um, and that's it I mean that that's what I, I, I had it for you uh, I just demo you some of these functions how to create a function how to um, to run the FN server I encourage you to to take a look into the uh, FN pray dot die dot IO website, you can download the dashboard with Grafana. Actually, um, let me let me show you Grafana. Okay, this is something uh, I did. Okay, it's to choose the functions that I show you, and this is a Grafana dashboard where we can see how our our functions are perform performing, how how many times they've been executed or the how many failures they have, how many functions are queued or running or whatever, or they are crashing or, or so on. This is a Grafana dashboard, which is ready to go. You can just download it from, from, the, um, from GitHub of the FN. If I go to the, to the GitHub for the FN project, you can have samples, um, Grafana dashboards, uh, the configuration for Prometheus and so on. This is this is very well documented, and the community has 
um, has been contributing a lot in, in, in the past months. So that's it. Um, thank you for for watching this webinar. I hope you you like it. And you, if you have any doubt, just drop me an email or send me a tweet or whatever or whatever channel you you would like to to use. So thank you. Thank you very much.